Okay, welcome back everybody. Today's video, we have a couple of jobs that have already been started uh, and we need to get them finished off. So my son has been hanging his clothes. He moved to a room in the basement and he's been hanging his clothes on the water pipe. Uh, and I can see it's starting to sag or starting to bend the water pipe. So I went and picked up a piece of dowel today. We're just gonna make some simple wooden brackets for the end of it, hang it from the ceiling joist because it's an open ceiling in the room that he's in in the basement and he can hang his clothes on that. The other project we need to do, we have an old storm window. Uh, someone gave this to my wife. We've cleaned it up, repainted it, and she wants to hang this on the wall in the end of our hallway. I don't know, put some lights or something behind it, make it look like a window. So we need to come up with a way to hang this on the wall. So I've already got the drill press set up. I got a one and an eight inch bit in here, same size as the dowel. I've already marked these two pieces of wood out for where I want to drill them for that dowel. We'll put a scrap piece of wood underneath it so when the drill bit goes through, it has something to hit. pilot holes through those pieces of wood for the screws. We're not going to be too particular with where these holes go. Now I'm going to go and install this, so I'll stop the video here while I go and install it, come back, and we'll figure out a way to hang this window. Okay, so we've got the curtain, or curtain, the uh, clothes dowel hung up in the basement. That's working out good for them. So we're back to the window. Now I've gone ahead and done some work because I kind of wanted to get through this one quickly. I have some other stuff I wanted to work on. So I thought of a couple of different ways of hanging this. The window is fairly heavy, so I, I'm not just putting nails in the drywall and relying on that to hold. So I ended up uh, with a smaller piece of wood, 16 inch on centers for the studs. I'm going to screw this into the studs and just let the window hang on this. I've cleaned the glass, got the wood ready, painted it because you'll see some of it through the glass. And the wife wanted some lighting put in behind this, so she bought a small package of battery powered LED lights, indoor use, doesn't say what the lumens are, they're not very bright. Um, I've already put them on the inside of the window. I'll turn the lights out in the shop, I don't know if they'll show up on the video or not, but we'll try it. Turn off the overhead light on the bench. And that's what we have for lighting. But it's only meant to be a, a decoration at the end of the hall, so it might work. One of the things we did, or I did with this window, and she doesn't know about, I built the sides up a little bit higher than what just the window was, and I routed out a quarter inch groove all the way around. She likes to paint, and she's good at it. So sometimes she may decide she wants to paint an outdoor scene and actually place it on the inside of this. So it looks like you're looking outside and you're seeing a forest or something like that. So, and then those small lightings will probably work just fine for lighting up that picture a little bit. Um, if it doesn't, I can see I'll end up coming back and doing a small string of clear Christmas lights or something inside that's a little bit brighter. But for now, we'll give this a try. See if she's happy with it. 
So I'll go and hang this, then I'll come back and we'll get on to something else. Okay, so we got the window hung up, the lights are behind it. She likes the way that looks for now. Uh, she does want to go and buy some, uh, it's, it's like a, it's a faint looking stained glass material. You wet the window and you stick it on. Uh, we did a, we have a narrow window beside our front door and we put that on for some privacy last year. It looks really good. So she wants to put that on that window. So someday we'll get a roll of that and we'll do that. We'll, we'll put that on a video. Got a couple of simple, simple picture frames here that I had started on a while back. Uh, nothing fancy. It's three quarter inch thick pine wood. Uh, pine's the cheapest to buy. These are just for home use for some paintings that my wife has done. Um, maybe someday we'll catch her doing a painting and we'll have a video of her doing that. Because as I said, this is not just going to be a woodworking uh, channel to watch. Uh, we do some auto mechanics on the old car. Uh, she does some painting. I've got some things outside to build. i got to do cold frames yet for the garden for next year. Eventually she wants me to get her a greenhouse built outside. So that's another project. And she's given me one here that we're going to hopefully get started on maybe today for a plant stand for in the house that she wants. And I've got one that I thought of the other day I want to make a garden cart for her, just because of some things that we came across last year when we were gardening. Um, so I've got just a rough sketch of that. That's how my ideas start out. And then I'll do some a little bit better drawing with some dimensions and stuff on it later before we get started. But maybe we'll get to, to start on one of those today. But for now, I'm going to get these things painted. Trying to think of what else I can talk about that we'll be doing so you're not just standing there or sitting there watching me paint, watching paint dry. I found some photos of some previous projects I'd done. I don't know if I could, if I held them up to the camera, whether or not uh, you'd be able to see them or not. A couple of them are items that we do still have, still use in the house. Some of them are items that I made for someone else. Uh, some of them have been used, taken apart. The wood's been reused for something else. This workbench was the surface of the workbench itself came from a previous project that I had done. The rest of it, the plywood, was from shelving that someone was throwing out that they had in the garage. And the rest of the wood for the frame just came from skids and crates that were destined to go in the garbage at work. So we brought all that stuff home and threw it together and made a nice little workbench with some storage in it. And it didn't cost us a dime to build it. We had hinges and hardware around from old cabinets and stuff that had been replaced or thrown out somewhere over the years. So I didn't have to buy any hardware. It will take two coats to cover these up right. And we'll do a very fine sanding in between coats. Just so we get a nice smooth finish on them. I suppose spray painting them would probably be better, but being what they are and they're being used around here, I'm not going to get the sprayer all out and everything just to spray a couple of small frames. This is our second frame. First one's done hanging on the wall right now. Right. This is just a water base interior black. It'll dry quickly enough be able to do a fine sanding on it, give the second, third coat if it needs it, just to get a nice smooth finish. These frames can be used in two ways. The way it is laying right now, if you drop the picture in, you've got a small black outline border frame around it. Or if you put the picture in the other way and turn the frame over, you'd have a wider two inch black border all the way around. I've done it both ways. 
I like this way better. Uh, the other way is just, I don't know, too much black, I guess. It takes away from the painting that's in it. So I'm going to paint this one to put in the painting. So this will be face up. This will be the front of the frame that you'll see when it's done. Some of this will be covered by the painting. You won't see it. But I want to paint it anyhow just to get it all covered. And again, it's this water base, so the wood is going to soak a lot in over this first coat. Okay. That's got that. A little heavy there on the edge. We'll hang that one up. And that can dry. We got that cleaned up for now. It'll dry fairly quick. We'll do a second coat, some sanding, and a second coat later on. Okay, so we're at the end of the project of these picture frames that we were making. Uh, the paint's all dried on them now, and it's time to mount some photos in them, or sorry, some paintings in them. So I've selected out a couple. I've already done one and put it in the house. Uh, the other one that I've selected out is this one. Hopefully you can see that on the video. Um, this is actually a scene, a place called Port Dover in southern Ontario. It's where all the bikers go for the Friday the 13th get-togethers. And this is a pier and a lighthouse that they have there that sticks out into the lake. So we've been there a number of times. Uh, the wife liked the way it looks. She did that from memory of what she'd seen there. The coloring was, wasn't was a sunset color or anything that she had seen there. It was just the colors that she chose to use in this particular painting. So on those frames, I told you before that you can mount them either way. So I'll show you before we actually put it in. Put it in that fashion, and yeah, it won't stay there. So that gives you about a two inch wide border all the way around the painting. Um, and some of them look all right that way. I, I just think it's too much frame material. It takes away from the painting. So I prefer to mount them in the other fashion. So it just comes out as a thinner black border. I think it looks a lot better that way. Um, the painting is recessed in a little bit from the face of it. If you wanted to, I suppose you could, you know, there's enough room there to put a piece of glass or something over top of it if you wanted to. Um, I've never done that. So this one's ready to go. I gotta drill some holes. I put screws through the back side of the frame right into the uh, frame of the canvas. It's about a half inch thick wooden frame, so there's room to put a screw right into it. So I've already got it all marked out for that. I just got a couple of rags here on the bench so I don't scratch the face of it up. I'm just using a drill bit that has a countersink head on it also, so the heads of the screws won't be sticking out and scratching your wall and stuff when you hang the painting up on the wall. And we've got a little picture clip to hang the frame over top of the nail. We have that marked out also already so that we know it's in the center. Just going to start the screws and thread them in until I can feel the points starting to come through the other side. Make sure that this is centered up in here so it has an even amount of space around the painting to the frame. And then we'll 
finish tightening up the screws. done, ready to hang up. That concludes our video from our paint frames and uh, we're going to have to make more. She has more paintings done. But I think we're going to start to try and get a little fancier with our frames. Uh, we'll get some smaller pieces of wood. We'll either make them or maybe we'll buy some smaller pieces. We'll start with something again that's maybe an inch and a half or two inches wide and we'll layer it with some different uh, shapes and sizes of wood and try and build it up into a fancier looking frame. We don't want to get too fancy. We don't want to take away from the painting because it's all about the painting. It's not about the frame. Um, but I like the way they look in these. This one, I think actually one of the family members have already claimed this one that uh, they wanted because they, they live actually closer to that area and they're very familiar with it and they liked it. So they want that one. So I think that's where it's going to go. Yeah, that's it. Thank you again for watching.